Hey guys, this is the Real Estate Podcast, and this is your host, yours truly, Matt Teifke. Real quick before we dive in, if you don't mind, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. We want to get the message out that real estate can be for everybody. We want to share the entrepreneurship that we're learning along our journey. So before we dive into the episode, please make sure you share with your friends, and we want to continue to add value. So thank you guys, and let's dive right into the episode. There's an effect that's a psychological effect. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And basically, when you start to learn something like real estate, you learn real estate until you get to a certain point. And then when you get to that point, you know, maybe it's a couple of months or a year in or two or three years, you think you know everything. So you get, you're totally blind to new thinking, new ideas. And then, then you realize that your, your knowledge is actually really not that much. Let's get it, my man. All right, guys. Uh, Clay Hepler here, Matt Typke. This is the Real Estate Podcast. Uh, excited to be here. This podcast is really a uh, journey uh, throughout our entrepreneurial career. Uh, we kind of look at the ins and outs of uh, entrepreneurship and real estate and get, get involved and connected with uh, amazing individuals that are pursuing their dreams and making stuff ha- happen and take action and getting entrepreneurial. So uh, Clay, I know you have a pretty cool background of, uh, you know, looking more at real estate from the cash flow analysis and structure uh, the deals a certain way and approach it where it's very, uh, what seems to me is scientific, uh, you know, or scientific as far as like, let's look at the numbers, let's look at the actual returns and let's, let's model this out. And so um, I'm really excited to have you on, man. Um, thank you for coming here today. And we try to give as much value as we possibly can. Uh, for you, for our listeners, uh, have fun. Doesn't have to be, you know, interview, but more just like, let's get real content, like come here, uh, check out our channels and like constant value is being put out. Um, so just to jump into it, man, like, I know you got a cool background, but like, what's, what's cool and exciting and inspires you about real estate and what's your overall view of how you look at it? Yeah. So what is so exciting about real estate is you can be stupid, like, like I am, right? And you can make it. You can make it. I mean, like, here's the thing. I was looking at businesses. Uh, um, my background is luxury chocolate. So I helped grow my family's business to, you know, 42 to 42 states in 18 months. This is a commodity-based business. So what happens is you have to order all this chocolate, this butter, the sugar, you know, different ingredients, cranberries, fruits, and you got to all store them in a warehouse. And then if you don't sell them in the right time or it's summer, it gets too hot, you can't sell it. Real estate is you go out and you buy a building and someone lives in the building. You don't have to worry about, you know, the time of year. People are going to want to live there. And it, it, it's all numbers base. And I'm looking at other, you know, purchasing other businesses right now. And it's like, there's nothing is as basic and boring as real estate and anyone can do it and anyone can be successful. You got to have the education, you got to have some money, but anyone could do it. And it's such a, I I like to harp on this because you could house hack, which is how I started. I house hacked and, you know, it, it completely changed my life. And in 13 months, I've been able to purchase like, like going to close on my 14th unit and over almost $3 $3 million worth of real estate. And I, I don't make a, like a crazy amount of money, right? Like I don't make like a million dollars. Right. And, and so I, I just think that real estate is, is this great equalizer that our, our your listeners have to pay, you know, pay attention to. Beautiful. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. And one of our <laughs> core values as a company is that within real estate, there's opportunities for everybody. Uh, and there's so many ways to approach it. And I resonate with uh, what you're saying. And it's, it's a simple thing of uh, it is very easy to understand. It just takes a long time. And that's where I feel like most people fail is they give up too early. There's also um, nothing's guaranteed, you know, as an agent, as an investor, like you're going to be spending your time on things that aren't going to pan out. But if you have enough lines in the water, things will start to pan out. You'll start getting the snowball effect where they just get better and better. You can get better loans. Everything always gets better 
in real estate, if you're committed and serious and uh, with time, you get all kinds of values, uh, which I, I'm confident that you understand. But just to give that value to the listeners, like that's the biggest thing. What I see people fail at is they don't understand that there is risk and you got to figure out how to be smart to figure out where to put your time. Um, and then being long-term minded with your approach. But the risk um, isn't, in my opinion, as big on the ownership side or the assets if you know what you're doing. Like you said, that you get the education, you understand what you're buying, you get good debt. The risk that I'm talking about is more like you're going to waste your time on things that aren't going to make you money, but you've got to be diligent and have a process to figure out when those things do work, how do you capitalize on that? Uh, opportunity. Right. And, and one of the best things about real estate is actually you sort of have this moat that you can create around you. And when I say that, I mean, in almost no other business that I know of, you can have a property manager, you can have a realtor, you can have a lender, you can have contractors, you can build a team of people that are within a phone call or a text that will support you. And it's such a relational based business. I mean, you, you can have a realtor that's been doing it like your, yourself. You know, you, you invest, you flip, you buy, you buy multifamilies, you buy, you burr, and you're a realtor, you have a brokerage. You, if someone were to go and work with you, you would basically like help them achieve what they want to achieve so much faster. And you get such a small little piece of the pie, right? Like you just get a commission for helping them build their dream. And that's why I love real estate too the barrier of entry is pretty low if you build a good enough team. So in order to be successful in, in investing in real estate, you really have to kind of get out of your own head and say, how can I build a team that's going to really support me along the way? Whereas if you're in kind of a startup environment, the team that you have to build, you have to pay them, right? You have to pay, pay them as a W2 employees, whereas you don't have to pay a real estate agent until you close. Yeah. And so I think that, from there, it's it's not super capital intensive. Intensive. It's just really relationally intensive. And if you have the right team and the right crew, you can really kick butt. I agree, man. I love it. And let's uh, dive into your story a little bit because um, you grew up around chocolate. You're in that business. Um, jumping into real estate, um, what was that that helped you? Did did you come in with some confidence? Um, how did you bridge that gap of like? you know, getting to the point where you are now, where you feel confident, you know, talking about it and promoting it. And because uh, it's not always easy. Like, I don't know how many years you're in, but the first two years, three years are tough. You know, I'm, I'm literally 13 years in. So I'm super confident because I've put in the work, but I'm trying to help people get over that hump that they're just stuck in analysis or they're stuck in feeling like they don't have the answers. But it seems like you had a confidence to just jump in quickly to get quicker to this point, um, which there's something there that could help somebody out. Is that, does that make sense? I, it, it makes total sense. And in the way that I approached it, I knew that I needed to go and work with people who have done it before. It's so easy to sit back and listen to a podcast and say, I know how to buy a 150 unit apartment building, right? Like, like, you know, people make it sound so, so easy. And the, and the best way that I've found to get into real estate, and I've only been buying for like 14 months, you know, um, 15 months at this point. So I'm really new in, the, in real estate. And um, I, I, but I've done it because I joined a firm, a, a local firm here, and I did some of their acquisitions work. I did their negotiation. I started to underwrite. I got a lot of reps and to see what, what's a good deal, what's a bad deal. And because I was able to learn with the support of someone else, a firm here, I was able to basically turbocharge my, my ability to, to get from not knowing how to evaluate, not knowing how to look at a deal to buying a deal, learning, failing a lot, but having sort of a, I had adequate cash reserves. And um, then it just kept going from there. Um, but I, I, to highlight what I just said, it really is getting... I'm going to go back to relationships, building a relationship or working for someone who's been in the business for a while in, a, in an asset class that you're interested in. And when you do that, you really can turn decades into days. They're learning like 
working for someone like yourself, I'm sure that someone who could just start out could buy a house very, very quickly because you've already done it. It's, it's easy for you. And so that's how I approached it. Yeah, that's good, man. And it's, it's a challenge. Um, we, we try to promote, our goal is to be the brokerage where agents come to TRE to get more out of real estate for themselves. And so back to what you're saying, you're, you're right. Like if you were a brand new agent, you could come here, we'll get you owning real estate quickly. Uh, but you get, you get pulled into these other directions where, you know, someone tells you about another brokerage that uh, can offer you some stock or whatever it may be. And you think it's yeah, right, right. great. Right. And there's nothing wrong with these companies, but they don't have brokers that are coming to meetings with you that promote owning real estate. And so it's not necessarily that we're better or anything like that. It's to your point of what is it that your goal is and, and go and learn from those people and, and approach it like a career, right? Like that's one of the challenges I see is that real estate allows so much flexibility that you jump into it and you don't treat it like a job and get the results out of it that you could if you did. Like if you treat this like I'm working, you know, 7 a.m. to whatever, I'm working and not just I got freedom, I'm floating around, then you can get more out of real estate. And it's that big hurdle that I, I some people it clicks for, some people it doesn't. And I'm trying to unlock that if that's what people want. And because uh, everybody, like you said, like real estate can be for everybody. Um, and I don't think people understand that. And I'm super passionate to get that message out, but it's freaking hard. There's, you know, risk, there's no guarantee, all these things. And we're promoting content all the time. And they're like, you guys, you know, this is not easy. I'm like, you're right. We're not trying to say it's easy. You people are just perceiving it that way for whatever reason. And that's a big challenge that we're, we're up against is like, how do you really lay out what this looks like? And so for you, like, What's your process to, to success in real estate? How do you approach it for yourself and your business? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I will say this. I, my process has been clunky. It has been, you know, I had a, a bunch of plans to do X and Y happened. My process is, is more about trying to find value in today's market. Um, you know, I, my, I purchased a three, a three unit house hack. I would recommend anyone who's starting in real estate to buy a house hack. That's a really easy way to get in and house hacking for your listeners that don't know is basically using a, um, a primary residence loan, which is usually a loan, low down payment loan. And you could purchase a, up to a four unit apartment building or just a single family home. And you rent out specific parts of the property. So that pays for your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, and maybe you get some off the top. Uh, you also have really favorable loan rates. There's tax benefits. There's a ton of different things. Um, and that's the best way that I found that you know people can get into real estate. When I bought my first property, I bought it for $202,000. It was a three-unit apartment building. Put about $160,000 into it, and it just appraised for $550,000. There's a lot of equity there. And so I've used that equity to buy another three unit building, which is right across the street from me, to buy uh, a single family home and to close on a six unit. And I'm going to be buying a multi-million dollar uh, short-term rental in, in Colorado, uh, which I'm in Pittsburgh. It's you know far away um, because I built enough equity in my deals that I could burr all the extra deals. So I burred every deal from, from here on out. So I guess the strategy is really burring which is for your listeners that don't know, you purchase a property on short-term financing. And um, then after you increase the value of the property, you rent it out. Uh, then you get it refinanced at a higher number and then you can pay off your, your short-term loan. Uh, so I've done that for, even for a six unit apartment building, I've done that, um, which I'm in the process of doing right now. Yeah, and you gotta, um, the, the strategy there is to uh, buy it right where you're, you're getting below value and then, you know, refinance it when you've added that value. And it's been interesting, man, as much as I like to, to think that I'm uh, an expert or whatever, I've been doing this for a long time. I've never worked through a downturn. Right. And so I'm, I'm starting to think about that. I always think about it and ask questions and, and uh, we leverage a lot. We take a lot of risks, but we buy below value. Uh, we're not buying like where we are in Austin, you know, prices are getting pretty high, like half a million, you know, it's almost seems like the average, but 
we're buying like 250 and 300. I don't go buy six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar houses. And so there is a little bit of risk minimized there because we have lower, you know, mortgage payments, but we also have rents that don't need to be that high. Um, but it, it's, it's just something that I'm thinking through. Like, it's been great, man. Like pulling all this money, buying more that obviously can't always be that easy, um, as it has been, um, uh, maybe it will keep going for a little bit, but just to, you know, uh, plant in people's head, like that's been great. And we're going to continue to do that. And when you buy, right, really doesn't matter. Even if the, you know, whatever the market is, uh, but just to have a strategy, uh, for myself, I'm just throwing this out, like, Start preparing for when things change a little bit. <laughs> right. I, I agree with that completely. I think the way that really insulate yourself from that is to have adequate cash reserves. Yeah. You know, um, if you're leveraging to the hilt, um, you want to make, make sure that you can, you know, carry your debt service for over a year. Let's just say, you know, if you're really, really leveraging, you want to make sure that you have um, cash reserves that can carry all your debt service. If you go 50% vacancy in your portfolio that you can, you know, thankfully I can do that. Um, you know, I, I'm in it, this Airbnb is going to be a little bit of a, it's going to be a step up, right? It's a, it's a graduation, uh, to the big leagues, but you know, I'm a lot of these loans, especially the ones that I'm using, which is a debt service coverage ratio loan for this, for this, um, short-term rental they require six months reserves. So, you know, you're, you're, you got like, you know, multiple five figures in the six figures in the bank account. Um, you know, that, that feels good for banks and also feel good, good for yourself. If, if your business plan doesn't go correct. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what, what's some of your biggest uh, challenges that you're up against or things that uh, maybe our listeners or we can help with people can plug in and uh, you know, just provide value. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, the biggest challenge I think is it for me is is actually um, you know money, you know, getting more getting more capital to purchase purchase real estate, you know, um, you know debt and I'm I'm particularly looking for debt from you know private investors uh, to continue to burr in in my my area. My my purchase prices are actually much even lower than yours. Um, you know, Pittsburgh, it's like. 150 200 but i look a little bit higher because i look at multi-units to burr uh because i don't love single family homes um but yeah i mean if you're asking i uh i'm looking for debt <laughs> yeah great man that, and that's another thing to point out is it's a one of the things that you hear a lot is you know find the deal that money's easy but it's actually not um you know you, you got to have people that you trust and know you but also there's a reason you're looking for debt and not equity because uh, you can, you'll, you'll make more, but also you can provide a good value for people, but yeah, you could take your deal to anybody and they'll buy it, but what are you getting? Right. Uh, so, which is why I'm assuming you're going the debt route, which, which can be a win-win. Uh, but it's a, it's kind of a myth is like, find the deal, find the money. It's not really as simple as that. Sounds. I wish. Yeah. I wish it was like that. You yeah. know what I mean? But you, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, you got a deal. Great. Like I'll buy it. Like, you know, uh, Clay, you'll get a commission. It's like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally there. Cool, man. Well, um, yeah, we try to keep these kind of short, uh, just to provide as much value. Like, is there any, um, thing you want to touch on and then also ways that we or our listeners can reach out or, or provide value uh, for you and your goals other than, you know, the debt uh, side of things? Um, yeah, the, one of the parting thoughts that I, that I would impart on your listeners is guys, you know, when you listen to these podcasts and I've listened to about a, a million of them, right? A lot of times we listen to the podcast and we don't stop and think I can make a difference. I can make a difference. I remember my life before I, you know, bought my first building that wasn't two years ago. My life has changed dramatically. And uh, I remember for years, you know, I was, I was much younger, right? Like I probably couldn't even got finance because I didn't even have a job, but I was listening to podcasts. I was talking with people. And there was this time before you buy your deal, 
And then after you buy your deal, the confidence that you get um, from buying your first deal and then starting to scale that up, it, it's really a beautiful thing. And I think that, you know, you should just take action, you know, start pursuing your dreams, start going after it and start, stop trading your time for money. That's what I always talk to everyone, you know, all, all the people that reach out to me about, you know, my wealth consulting services or real estate. It's just, you know, stop trading your time for money, buy assets that can, that can produce income so you can live the life of your dreams. That's what we're here for. We're not here to, to clock in or clock out. We're here to, to build the life of our dreams. So start, start today. Stop listening to us right now and, and start, start working. <laughs> now, now, love it, man. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's really cool to hear that um, because I'm, 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 I've been in this for so long, so it's not always easy to remember like what did I feel like before. Uh, but what you said resonated a lot, and it is true. Like this will change your life if you want it to. And I don't know any other industry that this allows the opportunity the way that this does for everybody. Anybody can, uh, you know go work at a, another company and, and some of these, you know, tech startups or whatever it may be can do really well, but you know, there's, that's, that's not for everybody. Like you have to have the right people, real estate, anybody can dive in and start finding value and start building their net worth quickly, more quicker than anything else uh, with a balance of it, it's a less barrier of entry. So it's just a beautiful uh, space to be in. And, and we're lucky, you know, to be younger, to have time on our side, which is great. Um, so use that to your full advantage and try to think one, three, five, 10 years down the line and, and recognize how important relationships are, uh, how important it is to add value for people and, and how important it is to be serious about your craft and not to just go find a deal and get lucky, like understand the variables and bring more value and think through things and ask questions. That's the Clay, one of the biggest things I've been thinking about a lot lately, when I started, I would, I had a list of like 20 questions at any given time that I just wanted to ask everybody I saw. And we've got 150 agents here. Um, and still to this day, like even outside of our agents and um, just other entrepreneurs, I never see anybody like thinking like that and asking questions, maybe because you can find it all, all online a little easier, but, but ask the same, like, ask people, how do you get leads? Ask that to a hundred people and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so I just want to throw that back out there as well. I, I love that. I love that. It, what, what you're highlighting right here is that you must, you must approach this with a beginner's mind. I, yeah. I'm sure you know most of the, the answers to the questions, right? But you're curious. Yeah. And in the, in the, you know, the most successful investors, um, the most successful investor in our, our, our era, I would argue, is Warren Buffett. And the guy reads newspapers all the time. He's, he's constantly having fun. He's constantly curious. He's constantly asking questions. And that's what really separates people from, you know, just thinking that you know it. There's an effect. It's a psychological effect. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And basically, when you start to learn something like real estate, you learn real estate until you get to a certain point. And then when you get to that point, you know, maybe it's a couple of months or a year in or two or three years, you think you know everything. So you get, you're totally blind to new thinking, new ideas. And then, then you realize that your, your knowledge is actually really not that much. And then you realize after you hit this kind of point of like, I think I know everything, then you hit this valley of, I actually don't know anything about this. I have so <laughs> much to learn. Yeah. And the key is don't hit that, that high point. Don't, you know, succumb to the Dunning-Kruger effect, just, just keep asking, keep being curious and, and keep growing. I love, I love your perspective, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that's great. Um, guys, uh, Clay, anything else you want to touch on before we get out of here? No, not yet. Um, Hey, listen to Clay, <laughs> go get some deals. Clay, we'll, we'll stay in touch as well, man. And we really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, it's going to be exciting to have you on in a year and talk about, you know, all the, the units you've acquired and, and things that you've learned and uh, just keep putting out that value, man, and get around good people and uh, let's all figure out how to grow together. So uh, guys, once again, thanks for uh, tuning on the Real Estate Podcast. Matt Teifke, Clay Hepler. Uh, we're going to be getting after it today. You know, we're talking now, but we're getting after it right now. So I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Reach out anytime you need anything at all. 